Brikes Hill, written and narrated by Davy Pollitt. Otto's face pressed against the window of the train. He gazed out at the English countryside rushing past. Mum had spent most of the journey trying to persuade him to change his mind about the wedding. Otto, please come to the wedding. It won't be the same without you. And what will Pete think? But Otto had made his mind up weeks ago. He didn't want to go to the wedding. He wanted to be with his real dad. It was so unfair. Why did grown-ups have to spoil everything? Dad was in Canada. He was always away. The whole family had planned to move there until Pete had arrived on the scene. Pete, his soon-to-be stepdad. Pete was all right, but Otto didn't like him being with his mum, especially now that they shared a room together. Before, when Otto couldn't sleep at night, he'd climb into mum's bed and she'd stroke his head until he fell asleep. He couldn't do that anymore, not with Pete there. Otto didn't understand why his parents had to break up. Dad had called from Canada a few days ago and told him about his new job. It was a good job, but it meant that he had to work over the summer and wouldn't be able to look after Otto. Instead, Otto was going to stay with his grandfather. Gramps lived in a mansion on the other side of the country. Otto had been there once before when he was three, but he couldn't remember much about the place. His heart leapt at the thought of staying with Gramps. Gramps was so much fun to be with. He was always fooling about doing magic tricks and telling interesting stories. Otto's friends called him a legend because he could magic sweets from behind their ears. Hey, Sweeties! <laughs> oh, sweet. That's magic. Yeah, that's Will you teach me that trick? Yeah. I need magic donuts. Oh, donuts? Uh -huh. I farted. Oh dear. Oh, What's that? Oh, can't be sinful. sinful. That's what I always say. Funny moustache. <laughs> oh yes, staying with Gramps would be a lot better than going to that boring wedding. Mum was travelling with Otto as far as Canterbury Station and from there he'd be collected and driven to Gramps' house. It was a long, boring journey and the carriage was hot and stuffy. And to make matters worse, he'd forgotten to pack his video games. That was Mum's fault, thought Otto. At breakfast, she'd gone on and on about the oh, wedding please, again. Darling, please and Otto had stormed out of the house to wait in the car, leaving the bag with all his games in the hallway. Maybe Gramps would have some video games. But then, Otto remembered Dad telling him that Gramps didn't even have a TV. Mum, are we nearly there? Not long now, darling. Probably about ten minutes. Mum was reading the newspaper. A photograph of a weird-looking wombat filled the back page. Above the picture, in big letters, were the words WANTED FOR BANK ROBBERY. Otto knew all about this wombat. Everyone did. The wanted posters were everywhere. It had been the biggest news story since Christmas. Extra, extra, read all about it. Bank robbing wombat at large. Apparently, the wombat was some kind of robot. Otto and his friends had joked about the bank robbing wombat, but Mum had said that it was no laughing matter because the wombat had stolen millions of pounds and some of the Queen's jewellery. A policeman had even come into school to talk about the robbery. Morning, children. Otto and his friends had dreamed about capturing the wombat and opening a sweet shop with the reward money. Finally, the train pulled into the station and there was Gramps' housekeeper, Audrey, -hoo, waiting Otto, on the platform. Over here. She was a large, cheerful lady with funny hair tied up in a bun. Her long silver earrings dangled down to her shoulders and when she moved her head, they made a tinkling sound. On her feet, she wore muddy green Wellington boots and her big lips were painted bright red with lipstick. My Otto, how you've grown. What a big boy you are. Now come here and give me a big sloppy kiss. Audrey dropped the bag she was holding, strode over to Otto and lifted him clear off the ground. <gasps> Legs dangling in the air, he tried to wriggle out from her grip, but it was hopeless. You remember the time I smashed your dad at arm wrestling? <laughs> Otto did remember. How could he forget? Dad had spent one whole evening trying to beat her at arm wrestling. He had huffed and puffed, grunted and shouted, but finally had to admit that Audrey was just too strong. Oh, blimey! Audrey, you're strong! Mum started to cry when they had to say goodbye. Now, now, Sarah, let's not have any more tears. Otto will come around in time, you'll see. I'm 
miss him so much, Audrey. I... Now, you just make sure you have a fantastic day and don't forget to send me some pictures of your honeymoon. Bye, Mum. Bye, darling. You have a great time and Please don't forget do to give my love to your gram. Love you. Have a great time at the wedding. The After they'd waved Mum goodbye, Audrey took Otto's hand and they walked to the car. Oh, your Gramps is so excited about you coming to stay with us, Otto. He's been acting like a kid for months now, playing and making toys down in that workshop of his. I haven't seen him like this since your father was a boy. As the car drove through the town, Audrey chatted away about the job she needed help with in her vegetable garden. I'll need a hand picking fruit, please, Otto. We've had a bumper crop this year. Apples and pears, strawberries and raspberries, and you should see the size of my melons in the greenhouse. When will Scar and Archie get here? They arrive this evening, which will leave us plenty of time for gardening. Now, why don't you take a nap? We've still got another hour or so before we arrive. It was a beautiful summer day and the sun was shining. As the car sped through the winding country lanes, Otto closed his eyes and began to daydream about the adventures he and his cousins would have. Skye and Archie were great. Skye was ten, a few months older than Otto. She could sometimes be a bit bossy, but he didn't mind. Mum called her a tomboy because she was really into sport, especially football and karate. Archie was nearly nine and totally crazy. He was always making up silly songs and speaking in funny voices. It was always fun when Archie was around. Otto, wake up. We're here. He opened his eyes and saw that they were approaching a huge gate, on either side of which a wall, higher than Otto had ever seen, stretched away into the distance. The gate doors were made of solid oak and were so big you could have easily driven a train through them. On one side of the road, an orchard grew right up to the wall. Rabbits hopped about in the grass, chewing the fallen fruit and munching on dandelions. One rabbit with black and white markings looked just like Otto's old pet rabbit, Bruce Lee, who'd run away when Dad's friend had left the back gate open. Maybe Bruce was living here with the wild rabbits, thought Otto. On the other side of the road, there was a wilderness of nettles and thorny bushes and an overgrown hedge ran alongside the road up to the Great Wall. Every now and again, a gap in the hedge revealed a scorched wasteland. There wasn't a single tree or patch of grass, just blackened earth and rocks. Otto shivered. For some reason, that place gave him the creeps. The car came to a halt. Wait here, Otto, while I open the gate. Just then, Otto noticed something move in the bushes. Audrey? There's a man in that bush. Poking through the hedge, glinting in the sunlight, he could see a pair of binoculars. Whereabouts is the man? Be careful not to point. He's in the hedge behind you. Is he now? Okay, I know just what to do. Be a good boy and fetch me some of those apples. And make sure you get some nice big mouldy ones. Mouldy? Why do you want mouldy? Just do as I say. And whatever you do, don't look at that man. Now, I'll go and open the gate. Filling the bag was easy, as there was so much fruit on the ground. Otto didn't like the feel of the sticky, squashy, mouldy apples, but as requested, he filled up the bag with rotten fruit. Audrey was now at the gate, tapping numbers into a keypad on the wall. A loud rustling noise came from inside the bushes. Otto couldn't stop himself from looking. He now clearly saw a big man staring through green binoculars. He wore a camouflage jacket and in one hand he held a pen and paper. The binoculars were pointed in Audrey's direction. How are you getting on over there, Otto? Yeah, I've done it! Excellent. Now be a good boy and bring them over here. With a great effort, Otto dragged the heavy bag over to where Audrey was standing. Mouldy apples began spilling out onto the road as he struggled with the weight. Right now, Otto. Let's take a look at what you've got there. Oh dear no, Otto. These apples are all rotten. We'll have to throw them away. With a quick flick of her wrist, Audrey began hurling apples. Like bullets from a gun, she fired apple after apple into the bushes. The man started to cry out as the rotten fruit exploded all around him. One caught him smack in the face and burst into tiny pieces. Her aim was unbelievable. Why are you loitering in the bushes, Ernie? 
You're after the gate code, aren't you? I was fixing the fence! They're blooming rabbits! They've been on my land again! Fixing the fence? With binoculars? I've never heard such a pack of lies. Spying, more like it. The sticky fruit had now attracted a swarm of wasps. They buzzed around Ernie's face and crawled inside his jacket. Desperately, he tried to swat the wasps away, but this just made them angry, and they began to sting his face and neck. Audrey launched another apple in Ernie's direction, which skimmed the top of his bald head. Gotcha! Now you stay away, Ernie, do you hear me? I'll be calling the police next time, you mark my words. Crashing out of the hedge, his neck and face stinging from the wasps and brambles, Ernie stumbled across the field, closely followed by the swarm of angry insects. <laughs> Audrey tapped in the gate code, and this time, with a great creaking noise, the doors slowly began to open. Ernie had gone. Audrey, who was that? That was Ernie, a buffoon of a neighbour. But what was he doing hiding in the hedge? <laughs> I don't think you need to worry about him, dear. But why does he want to know the gate code? The gate is always locked. It must never be left unlocked. Never. And the code must always be kept secret. Let's just say he's a very nosy neighbour who's given us a few problems, but it's nothing for you to worry about, Otto. Besides, I don't imagine we'll be seeing him again for a while. You're good at throwing apples, Audrey. Yes, of course I am. I was captain of the college baseball team, you know. The driveway stretched ahead of them. Through the window, Otto could see a great forest climbing up the mountains in the distance. Gigantic trees seemed to touch the sky, their leaves sparkling in the sunshine. He couldn't wait to start exploring. This is the Brikes Hill Estate. The car now sped past a huge lake, where Otto could see birds circling above the clear blue water searching for fish. Is this all Gramps' land? Oh yes dear, the Brikes Hill Estate is vast. Wow, Gramps must be rich. Yes, he's a very clever man, your Gramps. drove on and on up the winding driveway and suddenly there was the house.